What's up, people? You're locked into the two, 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 two Pro One Slow Podcast. Brought to you by KexUnderwear.com. The best underwear in the action sport game. Right, welcome back. I don't even know the episode number because we've been so slack. It's been two months um, since we've done one of these. There's a few reasons why. One, Billy has been a nightmare with his injury, getting surgeries and not surgeries. Tommy's been a bit... Busy I've been racing, here ready. Yeah, you've been busy, and then we came back last week, and I was due to do it, and then I got sick and lost my voice. So we've all been a bit slack. No, I I could have done podcasts at any given time, apart from there was one time where I didn't fancy it. I can't remember what I done. I think I went to Cornwall and back. Um, but other than that, it's all on Bill, I think. Well, well, anyway, we're back. We've got Doc Wob here again. Um, we are on the Friday the. 19th, so the week before the VMXDN, so yeah, that's why Wob's all, here. It's all on top now, it's all happening. It's all about to start, so I reckon we'll just have five minutes discussing Tommy's current affairs, because you're 15 points clear on the British Championship, one round to go, we haven't spoke to you for two months, and you've... You're firing all, I can't even keep up, you've been you're just pretty firing bu- it. You've been pretty you busy. don't have to get it all in in, one, in five minutes, so I'll no, miss just, our two just months off. Um, well yeah, with my stuff, I've um, been doing British Championship... Like you said, I've um, I've managed to well, I've not really built up a fifteen point lead. I think I had fifteen points after, or no, I sort of have over the season. But um, there's one round left, and then I'm fifteen points in front. So hopefully, I have a, a sensible round and can wrap that up. But it's hard to go over everything um, throughout the season. But it has been good. I run five rounds, which last year I didn't win one round. Um, but what happened last the last round? You were sick, weren't you? Yeah, I was sick before. Really ill, actually. We had a wedding. We went to Sam Lowe's wedding. Um, I was, I'm still getting backlash sick. from that. I didn't used to ill from that. No, well, you had a terrible do with your flight getting delayed and all that. Yeah. I lent my hire car to someone and now I've been billed 770 euros for a dented bonnet. Who did you lend it to? Fred. What did he say about that? It wasn't him. What's so he don't want to pay? <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> We've had a bad day. That, that weekend is, oh, is not one we had to a, talk uh, about. It was a weekend from... He- oh, I can't say that because it was Sam's wedding. We can't say it's a weekend from <laughs> That's hell. probably... Yeah, that's yeah, it's too far because it was an amazing wedding. The venue and everything was literally... Where was it? Um, Italy. Italy. Nice. But it was about an hour and a half from the airport in um, Bergamo or Bologna, one of them two, I get mixed up. And then, honestly, such a nice venue. But everything for me, my... I went to the airport, my heart, uh, Soph's car broke down as we pulled in the airport, so that's broke, it, start, it stopped in the parking space, well, then wouldn't start, so then I had that on my mind, that had to get towed home in the end when we landed, had to meet someone with a tow truck, but then my, we got through the airport, whatever, that was busy as they are at this time of year, um, flight was delayed three hours, but we sat on the runway with Alf being three years old. Um, for three hours before a two-hour flight. And then, because it was delayed three hours, I then missed my hire car because that closed at 10 and I landed at 11 and I was meant to land at 8. So then I had to get an airport hotel. Are you getting a picture for our bad, bad of yeah, a weekend? Not then, this is just, we've not even got there yet. Then I got an airport hotel anyway, got the rental car. The day of the wedding was lovely, like amazing. Um, and then wanted to chill out at the place because it was at the pool and everything, lovely. And then the next day, the woman at the hotel was like, oh, Ducati week at this, so the, your two hour and a half trip to the airport is going to take you three. Uh, six, she six. told us. So we're like, fucking yeah. hell, no time to even chill by the pool. So then we set off, no traffic, got to the hour and half airport in an hour and a half. Oh, fuck, so you're sitting right So now we're sat in the airport. airport. We could have been sat at a pool. We're now sat in the airport. Then the flight got delayed three hours. Yeah, then that flight got delayed three hours. Nightmare. Then I flew home. That flight was lovely. Passport control, breeze, no people. So that was nice. And then I had to meet the bloke with the pickup truck. He then towed Soph's car home. I then got a taxi home from Stansted to... Um, that was actually quite nice because I didn't have to drive. And then that was it. That was the trip. And then we all got ill. Everyone got... Um, <laughs> everyone... The virus was going around at the wedding. And then... But everyone was spewing and everyone was spewing and then I didn't get it until Thursday and then Thursday Friday I was spewing real bad and I never get ill and I hate being sick like well everyone hates being sick but I really hated it and then um I went to Whitby and, and I was like this he, is he bad. won he won at Whitby on Jacob's cream crackers as his diet for the last 48 oh, hours yeah. so no more 
<laughs> I just ate, I was scared to eat anything, Jacob's Green Crackers, and then um, somehow I managed to do it. It was real wet as well, so I was thinking this is going to be a bad day. Just miserable up there, wet, rainy. Um, but talking about rental cars, remember how many years did I rent cars for you when you were too young to rent? Yeah. Your dad didn't have a credit card. Yeah, dad never <laughs> had a credit card. <laughs> I used to show up, rent a car, give you the keys. Yeah, I forgot 16, all about that. And then you'd be, your dad would be asleep in the back, you'd be off driving, and yeah. I'm like, fuck. When's that like, in Europe? Yeah. For like two years I did that, when I was at Smith, and you were, I think... Well, even there. then, you couldn't even get... You can't rent a Just car Just bang that mic a bit closer, Wob, to you. So we can... You still can't rent... There we Even go. um, no, probably good reason we we fucked up so many rental cars. I don't suppose it's. I, th- I don't think you can get away with it nowadays. I've no. had so many times where I've got a bill. Even when I, I've sometimes took a car back immaculate, and then you just get a five hundred quid bill, and you're like, you can't do anything about it. No. What did you we do? We just when went you get on holiday. We were, we were late getting to the airport. So I went the wrong way, reversed, pulled the rear bumper clean off the car <laughs> on the way to take it back. I was savage, screaming and shouting at myself. Did you take insurance? It was it was insured, but I managed to put the bumper on, and I had to drive in so slowly because I could vision this bumper just popping back off. It's so bad. Yeah, the next I'd, poor sap's going to rent. That's that what happened clear. to mine. The, the rental car I rented was fucked. Like you couldn't have been more fucked. It, there was even dirt in it from no. the person before, and then they want to do me for a bonnet for seven hundred euros, and I'm thinking that's the least of that car's worries. But Fuck, yeah. did the, you take the worst the rental car I think? And Matt Allard, do you remember him? He he went. He pulled out of a hotel yeah, on did. the wrong side of the, the road or something. He was he, he did stuff for us when we were at Moto, did stuff for Racer BA, wasn't he as well? BA guy, yeah. He went the wrong way coming out of a hotel, as you do in the middle of the night, whatever. Head on with the car. I mean, oh. they raped him. It was a shocking amount of money. Dixon's done a few. He wrote one off, fell asleep. He's wrote a few off, fallen asleep. Yeah, it's not good, is Sweden, it? Sweden, he wrote one off, fallen asleep. I think he'd done engines till like four in the morning, drove to the air, drove to the hotel basically to get a shower, wrote the car off, fell asleep on the way there, wrote the car off. Shocking. Talking sad, about sad, falling asleep, sad. you see the ASA truck? Those boys put that on yeah. his side, didn't they? Was that fell asleep? Fell asleep. I, I assume, I don't know. I'm making out like I know everything about yeah, it. Yeah, I did see it on the side, but luckily everyone's all right. Out. Yeah, how many times we've Thingy. Been, been so close. I didn't know did that. Did you not see the picture? No. As I was driving to check. As a scaffold thing. Yeah, they weren't far away from the track, were they? I, don't, I honestly don't know. No idea. No, I, I'm... Well, I'm banging it on its side. Opinion. I don't... Put the truck clean on its side on the truck. And yeah. on the, on the, on Over the, the motorway. Arm car. Over the arm car. And the lad who's in the passenger seat couldn't wake up the driver and he jumped in the back before it went over. No way. Oh, Mark Chamberlain was in the back asleep. Chamberlain was Mark in Mark Chamberlain was in the back asleep, yeah. Did it wake no him way. up? I imagine. <laughs> um, I don't know the truth about it. it. Just I see the pictures, it looks fucked up. Yeah, it was. It was bad. But um, no, that's my British Championship. And then I managed to win the race. So the, it's gone well. Sort of me and Harry have been like dicing it up. He'd take, it seems to always go the same way. He beats me in the first race or a couple, like five out of seven times to see how it's gone. He's beat me in the first race, I think, and then I beat him in the second race. So he takes a little bit of points, then I gain a little bit of points. I mean, it's been like that all year, but it's been real, real fun racing, actually. It was up to 20-odd points, wasn't it? And then I didn't come to a race, and then you... Black saw I lost a few. Yeah, you did. I think last, I had 22. Land Drake. Uh, Land Drake. Formal. It's, it's been the last round for a few times. Last round, last... I think it's always the last round. I like it there. That's all right, yeah. Um, so that's... Um, that's two weeks after your race. Yeah. And then... Um, be better if it's two weeks before. Well, it's supposed to be, wasn't it? That's the trouble. Yeah, it was. The Grand Prix changed the date. The then I mean, Gareth had to change the date, so all the championships should have been finished, done, dusted before our race. Yeah, I remember so you were when we actually free to ride it. Yeah. And well, that's that's the thing, isn't it? If you've if you've come to this podcast off the back of Tommy's vlog, or you, if you're watching this first, the news is that that Honda have put a stop to you racing. Yeah. The VMX DN, which is disappointing. I can see it from their point of view um, and Dave's point of view. They focus all year to win the British Championship. Um, when we started the build, the British Championship did finish beforehand. Um, and they was umming and ah in One minute we was okay to do it. And then I think the final say was they really wanted me to focus on the Championship, which I can understand. Disappointing for myself because I think it's going to be the biggest race in England um, for a lot for a few years, even compared to the GP. Um, GP's hard. It's a good race, but... It's so early the last few years, isn't yeah, it? That I mean, sort who, of puts a damper on it. Yeah, I don't know why you want to camp at February. No. You know I mean? <laughs> Whereas this one, just generally being there, and I've got so many friends that are going that haven't raced in years. Um, I mean, I will say family. for our race, I'm, I'm blowing our own trumpet, there seems to be a real positive buzz, a real positive vibe. Everybody's going. Yeah, everybody's no excited negative. for it. There's only one shit-stirring prick causing problems. 
but he's got an ulterior motive, and that's you can't keep everybody happy. No, you can't keep everyone happy. Fuck them. And so everybody's coming. Seems like it's going to be a good do. Jordan Booker rang me the other day. He said, "You know what? I haven't felt this positive buzz in English motocross since the Nations was a matter." No, it's true. No, I genuinely agree. And with that's him. a good point. I'm like, yeah, you got it. I think there is a positive vibe and a positive Definitely. buzz about it. And usually everybody's doom and gloom, and everything's shit, and everything's going to be. It's quite a cool because obviously a lot of people are building bikes as well. So even on Instagram and that, yeah, it's like a project. Like someone's. Yeah. Put yeah, a lot of we've time We've been sharing anything. everything. If people put pictures up, we've been sharing them so people can see what everybody else is up to. Yeah. And some of the bikes are mint. They're really nice. Yeah, everyone. Are Every bike I see looks unreal. Mel Pocock looks like he's built a pretty good one. Yeah, yeah. you've got John Gifford doing the motor, so there'd be nothing wrong with that. But nice. there's, I'll tell you what's cool. There's a couple of Kawasaki's. Bob, remember Bob Bratcher? He used to be on the Britain mechanic, RWJ mechanic. He was Matt Gordon's mechanic. And he's built a couple of really nice KX250s. What year are they? Uh, 2001s, 2000s, something oh, like that. So really not like the older ones. No, full on ones. like Chad Reed, black frame looking. They look oh. fucking track. Is yes. this going to be, again, you're doing a show and shine? Show and shine Thursday night. So um, people are going to show their bikes. People are just going to show up, put the bikes on a stand, but stand around and talk about them. Because once the racing gets going, everybody's a bit too busy, you know. Yeah, but you can walk around the pits all weekend anyway, can't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. No, there's no pit access. There's, everything's open. No problem yeah. at all. And... You know, we've got the A paddock, which is the paddock nearest the road, which is all the VMXDN class and the sponsors. Then you've got the B paddock, which is the big flat space next to the track. And then the camping and the parking goes from there to the pub down the road. It's massive. We've got so much room. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, the pub in Indian. In. And I say, we're the ticket sales are finished now because they advise us to finish them 10 days, two weeks before the event to give you time to. That's the pre-sales. The pre-sale. But you can still pound the gate. Pound the gate. Oh, yeah. Everything's available at the gate. Just keep coming in. We cool. just need... We want that Grand Prix vibe. That's what we're going for. We're going for the 90s Grand Prix vibe. And the amount of guys, like Mick Aldis, who was Stefan's mechanic when he won the World Championship, I think he bought like 20 tickets for all his family. You know, Jockey Carlson's got like 15 of his family coming from Sweden. Really? Oh, and it's like everybody, like Mick would say, a lot of these guys didn't even My want to come. My family bought tickets, now I'm not racing. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to find out on here. Yeah. Gutted. <laughs> We're all gutted, mate. I'm gutted you're not riding, but... Even Ed, I think Ed's like, for fuck's sake, can't you just race it? <sighs> I'm like, We're wow. All gutted, so right, it's it's just a shame, isn't it? Because obviously, I mean, if, you, if you're if you watching this podcast, and uh, sorry, oh, listening, bike the, there, bike, the bike's right behind you. We, we even got you on the merch, look at that. Oh, these are the cups. These are the, the beer cups. These are the beer cups. Why aren't they full, Wob? Yeah, we could have had a beer while we were sitting. <laughs> we had a beer while we were I've had a long day. Oh, we've got bigger ones. So that's the Tommy's. Tommy's half pint. That's, that's probably about right, thought, isn't it? We thought you'd be all right for some pina coladas. That's why yeah, we that's you on the what, that's glass. more what I would drink, pina coladas, <laughs> rather than beers. But these are instead of uh, the disposable cups. And they're only going to be, a, when you buy a drink, they're a pound. And you can keep them forever. Refill them up. Refill them up. Yeah. You pay once. I thought, that's con- you know, it's a good idea. We go it's to a lot of festivals and you take a little bit away from everything you see. Yeah, that's cool. I agree. But I am, I'm <laughs> still going to the race. Um, because a lot of my friends are going, even people that have not ra- have not raced for years, and they weren't really interested, and they've not been to watch the race in years. They're like, I'm going there, um, so I'm still going to be there from Friday to Sunday, watching the racing. Um, just the gates open midday Thursday. Yeah, well, I'm not going to get there that early. No, midday Thursday till midday or two o'clock Monday. So it's four day deal. We've got live music. Oh, it's bank holiday oh, Monday. So you can, holiday Monday. You can wake up with a hangover Monday and you haven't got to leave straight away. You've got to leave straight away. You've got to <laughs> two o'clock. That's all right. But it's, yeah, I forgot it's bank holiday. We're going for the Grand Prix vibe. If we can get that 90s Grand Prix feel about it. Do you reckon there's going to be any uh, people dressing up as in the 90s oh, across so, yeah, memorabilia? That'd be, that'd be quite good. It would, wouldn't it? Yeah, lots of fluorescent shit. Yeah. yeah if you're really listening to this, cool. what dress up and some fluorescent Honestly, I haven't got the riot helicopter like they had there one year. It'll be fine. I reckon if if whoever's got the best dress, I'll give them a set of kecks if, if we... That'd be cool. A yeah. little okay, competition. I'll I'm going to be like vlogging. I'm I want to see be somebody dressed as George Michael with the full wham. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be well, behind the scenes like vlogging, it. I think. That's my, that's, I can do that. Yeah, I? You, you, you're a new of, yeah, yeah, you found love for vlogging. About, I mean, at the end of the day, I wish you were riding. It looks like, you know, I've bought a couple of bikes, me and Tone put them together. It's been a lot of work. You won the merch. You know, we were flat out for it. And, you know, shit happens. It is what it is. I understand. I'm not Yeah, happy. I do. And then I'm not over the moon about it. But who no. cares? It's not. Oh, and we're still going to come. I am the, still going to come. We're still going to have a mega weekend. Yeah. And it is. We'll have to. You know. Yeah, I'll do it next. Every as um Dave did say, I have got a long time to be able to race that race. And uh, although I wanted to do it right now, here and now, this year, because it's I it's I new somewhat get it. If I was Honda and I was paying someone to do a job, and then the that worst is my the, job. Yeah. Isn't it, if you, know, you got so. her. And full respect to Dave. He rang me up. He told me the situation. He told me why. He warned me beforehand, but 
we kind of bailed our head in the sand a little bit, thinking, fuck, it'd be all right. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I'm three quarters of the way through a bike build. I ain't just going to stop no, at that point. No. And all the merch is ordered. I'm not going to take my foot off the gas at that point. Well, the, the plan is to ex- use it, in it, the bike as well. So. We're going to use it. And then Dave rang up and he explained. He's like, you know, Tom is fired up for the race. He's riding a bike that he's not going to have ridden much before the race. He's That's why I took raced, it easy in my He's never video. raced a 252 stroke <laughs> in his life. And he's racing with a bunch of guys who would put you over the track in yeah. a heartbeat. And not think anything of it. My plan was whole shot, stay out of trouble. Yeah, but and then I'm up against good guys. I know. think of any, I would have been. Yeah, and Wobbs put some extra love into the yams. <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about extra love. <laughs> you can only do one level of build, kid. That's as good. No, yeah, there's a yammy behind us as well. If you're listening and I'm watching, then uh, they're probably gonna. Well, they will be featuring on Tommy's vlog. They're pretty special. Oh, we didn't do. You didn't talk about the yams in my video, did we? We talked about them in the video before in the pre-build, but. Again, you're you're sponsored by Honda. We can't really no, fill no, your I video up with you. Find out a bit myself about. Well, that. that's what we're going to ask Wob right now. We're going to. Oh yeah. We're going to discuss all about the build. So, it was. I think it was before Christmas, but you lot think it was after. After definitely after Christmas. So, we had an and this bike here behind me. Yeah. That it was a nail, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Wheeled well, it out of the van. Yeah. What? Well, you've done a lot. What have you done to it? Everything. Bare, you know, you got to start with the bare frame. Um, take it all apart. We we. Take it all apart, then we get all the nuts and bolts plated. Not that we're going to use them, but you don't know what clips or what little bits you're going to need, so you might as well make them look like new. Then the frame gets welded for the skid plate lugs. We've, we've fitted steering dampers to these because I'm thinking you're going to be on the gas down the hills. You could do with a steering damper. And luckily we had some triple clamps that had the steering damper mount, so it's not that big a deal. You have to, got to relocate the ECU to underneath the right-hand rad panel to, so you can run it. So there's that. Uh, I mean, to say what we've done to the bike, we'll be here till 10 o'clock tonight. <laughs> we've got time. It's got no, every so time, you, 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 every you started it as a frame. You've, you've not powder coated the frame or anything. You've just no, blasted it back. It's, it's probably eight hours work to, to polish to it. Polish the frame. Yeah. Starts off with vapor blaster to get yeah, all the marks on. And it does look like new, though. Inside. I thought that this morning. It could be a brand it's new a frame. A lot of work. A lot of work to do the frame. A lot of work to do the swing arms. But then the crankcases, the cylinder, the power valve, the head. Um, the cylinder got plated, then it went to California for post circuit. Mitch Payton, that's the same engine spec as Ernesto Fonseca's CR250. Yeah, uh, we've got to run it on good fuel uh, on uh, VP fuel because the compression ratio. We ran it earlier, by the way, and it smells amazing. No, it so, yeah, if you go to the race, smell mega. it smells oh, the race is going to smell good as well because everyone's going to yeah. be on that, and yeah, it smells yeah, mega. it's going to smell good. The noise, the I mean, the thing's fucking loud, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. what Ed said straight away. It's like, what oh, bites loud. And what's weird is the Silencer on that has got a smaller bore than the off-the-shelf Pro Circuit silencer. Now, you would think... Oh, so you can't buy that silencer? No, it's all special. Oh, wow. So if you wrap the pipe around the frame, we're fucked. <laughs> no, I'm not going to. Because I ain't got a spare. Well... The stone's yeah. dented it. You're not going to be riding it now, so it's going to be sat on a, on a stand, so... Yeah, it's going to oh, be Oh, no, display. but I was going to still ride it after. There, and then we're going well, to yeah. find a race for you to do. Yeah. After, the, after you've won the championship. What um what bits have we got on it that are super light or made? Super light stuff, full titanium axles, titanium linkage bolts, um, oversized rotors, oversized... And all this is buyable now. Oh, we buy it, we do everything. The newest thing we put on there, which actually you tested today without knowing it, was foot peg brackets. Oh, nice. Foot, foot peg lugs, they're really heavy steel things, all worn out to baggy to shit, so we've made titanium ones like the factory guys. Is um, that what the factory... Do you make them for the... Um, Factory team just supply oh my God, we supply, yet. Yes, we make so much stuff for those guys. No, but the foot peg mounts, not yet. No, no, we've only made them for two strokes for now. We do make right. a Yamaha one for the factory Yamaha guys. Oh, you do? Yeah. Um, so we know, we say testing, we know there's not going to be a problem no. because we make them to the same specs, so we make their stuff. And then, um, fuck, now you got me on the spot. There's so much stuff on it. Uh, the rear brake carriers are all knackered on them because at some point somebody's put brake pads in without the wear pads and they're all just mullered. Yeah. So we make a rear brake carrier, axle blocks, axles, aluminium nuts. Um, it's had a fair, a fair bit of work. Oh, my God. It's, it, it, we couldn't do anything else to it. No, no, it I don't know like what it. else you could do to a bike to well, make it's better it. than... It's Can better you than stop new. knocking that, please? Oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> and then k be- did the suspension for yeah. you. So that's good. So we know the that's good. suspension felt good, real good. Pro circuit triple clamps, which are CRF uh, for the steering damper mount. And so that's why we have to use the cycle front plate and the slightly newer shape front fender, which I know people complain about. Oh, is it a newer shape? Yeah, we had one guy giving it. You ruined it for me. It's the wrong shape fender. I'm fucking sorry. The new ones are a bit more <laughs> round, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, but... You I'll can't be, please them all. Mate, you cannot please everybody. I'm learning that. 
My uh, Daffy Duck's not quite the same as the old one either. Uh, the Woody Woodpecker. Carmi- is that what it is? P- Woodpecker, not Daffy Duck. Yeah. Um, Carmichael's one had... I think he had a few different yeah, flags. Yeah, but they changed. They changed. Yes. Yeah, one time, one picture I see had a Czech flag. Another picture he had an American flag. Yeah, different years, So I was going to get a British flag. Yeah, that'd be cool. But then the picture didn't look as good as that one. No, they look really good. And then, you know, Talon Wheels, your man, Ben at Dirtwork, sorted those out yeah, for us. Yeah, Ben did... Uh, Talon hooked us up and... Between Ben at Dirtworks and Talon. What's really cool is, ta- is Renthal have made a new cloth bar pad to replicate what they made in the 90s. And they're not available yet, but they've sent us a box. So we're we're debuting those on this race. And they actually, gonna... um, they're a lot more special in real life than just saying... No, they do look the cool. Uh, it it really finishes it off. On that bike, you go, yeah, that, you can see why they're true. nice. When you, when you look at the 96 bike, your Honda 96, it's got a normal one on, and then the cloth on these, it's yeah, they're really night cool. and yeah, day. Finishes them off off I mean, you could buy fake ones, but they stain up real bad. They're all right, but now Renthal are making them again, so it's a genuine thing, so that's cool. And, and you'll be able to buy them. Paul Vaginos, who's the Renthal brand manager, global band manager, yeah, who no, used Paul. to be Dean's mechanic. He sent us the stuff. He's, oh, wicked. He, and he's, like I say, he, all he wants is pictures from what we're doing, so... I, would, I took loads, so I'll send you them later. So that'll be cool. And then on your yams? We haven't finished with the Ondiak, yeah. Oh, go on. <laughs> so Sorry, GMX mate. radiators, um, they're, they're the best radiators in the business. No question, no argument. No. They're just the best. So And they, they look after us. Samco hoses, can't beat them. Uh, I use them on my race bike. Full dent and engineering linkages, just because they're fucking trick. That's just all you would, need to know. Would he make them for my race bike as well? Yeah. Because this year on the Honda, I would have liked a lower one. You'll make anything you want. They're so clever. You'll do anything. He's ace. And then Polysport Plastic for you. Cycra front number plate, front disc guard for the big 280 super light disc. K Tech Digital Suspension. This throttle housing looks pretty trick from yeah. here. What's that? I like that. Nothing special about that. It's just paper blaster. I know. No, but, but it's, it's red. Smart. I can see a red. Throttle tube. It's an aluminium throttle tube. Yeah. A Pico aluminium throttle tube. And an a Pico kickstart. I know people. Uh, but nothing wrong with it it's all good you've you've built a lot to, with help haven't you so we've oh. used parts that probably weren't on Ricky's bike and other bikes like it but you've factory immigration some parts like yeah you've immigration. used a lot of parts that from people that have helped you out yeah to obviously keep the cost down and yeah yeah and we get a lot of help because I'd like to think the people who help us get a good re- return for a oh, relatively yeah. small investment yeah yeah well they've had three YouTube videos two well, podcasts that's the thing you know, but, you know you get somebody who's racing a series and they expect all this free stuff and don't give yeah. anything back and it, as a sponsor you need to that's exactly what I always think was slightly off topic but with Kex I think a lot of people message me saying can I have a free pair of Kex with zero Instagram followers and do nothing and I think no, exactly. was, there's no that's where no really, win that's why we're really good with the super light because people say mm, that's expensive because they give it away to factories nobody gets it for free yeah we're factories a techni- are paying we're a technical partner they all buy it yeah I mean, they get a deal, but they all buy it. And when you see the volumes of stuff that we get through is... Yeah, we've been numbered before and there's no, bags. Yeah, but they're not buying brilliant. it because they're getting a deal. They're buying it because they want the best product. The exactly. factory teams couldn't care they less. They don't care less about the price. No. No, and like the test stuff, we're constantly sending stuff to KTM. I've got Dirk, who's the... Yeah, I know Dirk. I like Dirk. Team manager, he's on to me. Right, we need to try and figure this out, try and figure that out. And we're just constantly changing everything. Nothing's the same. But when do such a cracking job, you know. When you get these bikes, not <laughs> I don't want to s- sound like an offensive thing, but is it a bit of a fluke when you start it up and it because they don't? It's not skip to beat all day. Like you've started it up and it's worked mint. Fluke. He ain't got a fucking yeah, no, scoop. Fuck, no, <laughs> luck of the draw. The face no, when it's, it's fired up, like, it's over the moon. <laughs> <laughs> not that's Hand the wrong way. Heart. These six bikes we built. There's four Yams and two Hondas. I will say, hand on heart, they have all started up first kick. Yeah. I no reason to lie to you. They have started up, and they. But when you build them right, they're going to be right. When you put them together, you check for spark, you clean the carb, you yeah. service everything. That's what they've I was got to start. It's not a luck. They've got to be. Yeah, it's not like you pulled it out of a garage. But it, like even the jet ends, relatively, you're not yeah. a mile away. No, we're not a mile away. I mean, like it's really hard to jet a bike until you've run it properly because it will feel tight, and tight feels like rich. Yeah. So you start going leaner. And you'll put oh, yeah, less oil in the motor, saying, yeah. and it becomes a problem. You've got to put like an hour on them. Like now, that bike feels completely different from when you yeah, first it does, fired yeah. it up. So now we can we can richen it up. Yeah, because it felt rich before, but it, rich and tight and oily feel the same. Yeah, so I mean, you you you've brought this bike 
for Tommy to ride today and, yeah. and you've rode it around the garden at home a couple of times. We run it around the garden, we put we put them through heat cycles basically where you run it for like first time for like fifteen minutes and then let it cool overnight. Yeah. Next day run it for like twenty, twenty five minutes, let it cool overnight. Then you go through the gears, but there's only so much you can put on it. We need somebody to ride them. Yeah. To bed the brakes in, bed the spokes in. There's there's not a lot of point in doing too much jetting because I, we, according to the, to the weather and stuff. According to it? the weather it's gonna be good. But we can't mm. and the good thing about, you know, yourself and Brownie and Ryan Villapo who we're building for, those guys they'll tell you what they want. They're so good. Yeah. You know, they'll be like, It's this, it's that and we'll just change it to them and we've got you know, Julian Dobb working with Ryan. Well, Julian knows how to jet a bike. We yeah. know how to jet a bike. We're all going to be working together. We should have them running spot on. Yeah. The sound of those going up those hills. You shouldn't... The weather should be quite similar to what we had today. It's going to be 24 to degrees, sunny, cloudy. It's going to be... You couldn't ask for... No. We're over the moon, you know. Yeah, you that comes off. Weather. Yeah, it's 32 and 38 degrees. Fuck, that's too hot. <laughs> but you get what you get, you know what I mean? I know as soon as you mention Fox Hills, everybody talks about the muddy one at the Nations, but... Did you still have fun? Yes, you did. So yeah. It's only a problem if you're a mechanic. Uh, the weekend is what you make it, isn't it? If, you, exactly. if you're there for a laugh with your pals, it doesn't really... You're exactly. still going to race the bike, whether it's muddy or rainy. Or and when you're watching, you know, it's like you watch an F1, I'd rather it rain because it's much more interesting. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. No, so it's going to be good then. So that it seems so, yeah. That's, um, that's Tommy's bike. So then the Yammies is, again, it's pretty much the same. the same people who help us out. we got the same little group of people. You know, Denton make the linkages, GMX do the rads, Samco do the hoses. And same thing, straight to the frame. Straight to the frame, welded, strengthened. Uh, difference with the the frame on the yam is that it's powder coated. Only Benton at Ceramics does the powder coat. We found a a, a, a colour which is called Bentley Blue, which we we think is the same as what the factory Yamahas yeah, used to use. Oh, it's so nice, that blue on the and frame. It, they use when it for, under, sun, they use it for under the lights so it pops, like when Kawasaki used to run fluorescent green frames because it looks better under the lights. Mm-hmm. Yamaha used to use this colour to bring out the lights. Yeah. And then, you know, Evo MX do the graphics on this one. They've done a cracking job. Did you get any help from Bud Light? Nothing from Bud Light. Oh, so. I was going to say, you and Tony surely needed a few Bud Lights. all kinds of copyrights, if I'm honest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we, we went for the McGrath graphics because you think the factory Yamaha... It's cool, but it's a bit too plain. Yeah, that's the problem with some of them. It's a bit too plain. So the, the, we went for McGrath Bud Light because who doesn't want to look like the king, you know? Mm. No, it's cool. And then same people, Talon. Uh, the difference with the Yamaha's obviously suspension. So we've got KYB. So we've had Nick at Pro Racing help us with some Enzo stuff. Um, we've got some X Star Racing kit suspension, which we've remade, fit the two stroke. So we know that's going to work well. Uh, we've got big brakes on it, we've done everything. Um, yeah, my brakes worked amazing today. Yeah. We just you just got to build them nice. That's all you got to do. And then, have you yeah, had any? The arms we've gone. Well, I could have done endos on that today, in, like eleven. Fuck off! You, can't, you can't do it. I come over one of them jumps. You was over the other side of the track. I popped over the top. What lovely endo all the way. Very three, four seconds. No, I mean, three or four down. seconds. When grow we're building up. them, a big thing for us is I don't want it to jingle jangle like an old shitter. No, like you fire these bikes up and you buy them. Everything's like so. Everything that's baggy gets. Oh yeah, that must felt like. It didn't jingle at all. I've got a full-time engineer, and that's all he does all day is machining shit to make it. Yeah, make it feel tight. tight yeah, nice. they don't, honestly they do. When when you first before you rode it, and I pushed it to the to the stand over there. Yes, yeah, brand it's like new, solid in it. Like everything. A brand new bike. Yeah. Well, factory bikes do, don't they? That's what they the do. clutch, the levers, and everything make a big difference straight away. If they're worn and they're like, yeah. that one's just everything's just. Perfect. Things on these, the clutch levers, levers. Um, a four-stroke lever, so we have to bend the pet, the actual lever blade, to work on a two-stroke a little bit because the ratio is a little bit weird. Yeah, it's not quite the same. Yeah, you were saying you bent mics, and also mics asked for a lower subframe, and mics asked for lower subframe steering damper on the Yamahas as well because he wants to be on the gas down the hills. And you've got a tall seat and a we've got, we've got tall seat, low seat, tall subframe, low subframe, three different offset triple clamps. Fucking hey, this is what much. Mike said he wants. <laughs> No, but if we can give it to him, then he'll... The thing is, people bitch and moan, but it, if you can make these guys happy and feel safe, yeah. they'll perform. Yeah. And who wants to come and see somebody wobble around because he don't trust the brakes? Yeah, and 80%, and don't percent, you don't want to see 80%. You want the no, full... And like the thing is with the guys we've got coming, I mean, I've had a lot of conversations with Ryan Villapoto, and he's like, oh, I'm just going to get top five, I don't... In fairness, Ryan's got fuck all to prove. He's a nine-time oh, no, AMA championship. He's got nothing to prove. He definitely he's doesn't have come nothing over to prove. Us and beers, but he's a racer, isn't 
Yeah, the minute he gets on that stuff. And start, all them air horns, all them flags, all them people there, it's going to feel like a big time event. Yeah, I'm, I'm yourself, excited <laughs> now. I'm not in the race to actually watch him rip one of these. Yeah. Well, you forget how good, from my, for, I never watch a race, I never go, but now you talking about it, I'm like, fucking hell, yeah, watching this lot. And even like Irwin, Pocock, oh Bradshaw. God, the names, Elliot Banks Brown. Yeah, Banks Brown, like they're just going to be ha- ringing the neck of, of these bikes flat Anderson's out on a two stroke. Do you now see why Honda don't want you there? <laughs> yeah, you can see why <laughs> they don't want me there. But now. Yeah, it's, it's going to be good just watching that, like generally exciting, way it's, more exciting than a normal it, there's race. There's the smell, there's the sound. With the air horns, with the we're we having that Darude sandstorm playing as you go to the line. Oh, I like the GP. Oh, I like like yeah, the GP. That's cool. Back in the day, well, when I first started GPs, that, that was that. Yeah, between that's cool. them two. So we've got that all planned out. It's going to be. It should. If it if it's not a good weekend, we can't make it any. Well, you, you try, don't you? Yeah. I, I, I think it's going to be you know? very good. So we've had a good go, and and then you got. Mu- we got music Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Friday night. No, not Saturday. Thursday night. Thursday yeah. night's just well, background elevator music, I'm guessing, or something. But yeah. like, we've got live bands. We've got Bon Jovi tribute act on Friday night, and they're mega. They're, I, I follow them on Facebook. One week they're in Dubai, next week they're, they're all over the place. They're really good. And then the Saturday night, we got the Audio All Stars, which is like they sing, you know, Mr. Brightside by the Killers and Oasis and all that kind of stuff. So they'll get the place rocking. Yeah. And then Sunday night, after party, we've got two DJs. Oh, mega. So it's going to be all right. So we can have a drink. And the thing is, most of the time with the race we used to do is your average guy's got kids. He can't get to the track till Friday night. He's racing Saturday, Sunday. He leaves straight away because they've got to get the kid in the bath and back to school. Well, kids are not at school, so you can come Thursday. Yeah, you, you want it wants to just be a relaxing weekend. It's nice going to be weekend. a relaxing weekend. Friday is the best, my favourite day because there's no stress with racing, you're talking, chitty chatting, a bit of scrutineering, yeah. a couple of beers in the tent. It's nice, you know. And then Sunday... We're not all. Otherwise, everything's just gone. Seven o'clock Sunday night. Well, this way, yeah, it's most nice. people are staying. Well, why wouldn't you stay for a free party if it's like, yeah, you've already paid for the camp and you've already paid to be yeah, there. Definitely. Why wouldn't you? You know. So what? What's the? Let's go through this the schedule. So it's Thursday. Door gates open twelve midday. Midday. Midday Thursday. Um, and then everybody's parking up, getting camped up. We've got the show and shine. Like 6 p.m. outside the beer tent. So Let's bring just your bike, roll your bike up. Roll your bike up, put it on a stand, stand and have a drink, chit chat about your bike. There's going to be some minters there. And then Friday morning, scrutineering, sign on, check out the track. It's obviously a bit of buzz going on all day Friday. No bike, no on, riding on Friday. No riding on Friday. We're okay. not allowed to have any bikes on track Friday. And then what, uh, Roger Warren's going to be doing interviews in the beer tent before the music's on. So that's going to be flat out. So that's Friday afternoon into the evening. Friday afternoon, evening. And then Saturday, back to... Practice first thing, two races Saturday, music again, Beer interviews. In. We've got Rick Johnson coming, Dave Thorpe's launching his new book. Cool. There's a lot of legends walking around the place. We nearly got Stefan to come. Nearly. Mr. Everts? Yes, but he's, ah. in Port- he's in Portugal on holiday, but we are ever so close because he was going to bring some gin. So that was that was a conversation we had this week. And things are changing all the time. We've got some lots of people coming out of the woodwork. We've got a couple more Americans coming over. Cool. Um, we've got Dennis Stapleton. Zach's still coming. Zach's coming, yeah. We've got Dennis Stapleton coming over, who's a MXA test rider, doing a big feature with MXA. When's Zach landing? I don't know. know. So basically, from Thursday onwards, if, wow. you, if you turn up at the track, there's, a, there's something to look at, oh watch, God, and so do. There's so much to do, yeah. I mean, and the trade area is not just a few shops selling tat. It's like... A Masters brands. of MX going? If they are, you can buy kex there. Oh, and my match. <laughs> yeah, there'll be that. But we've got like, you know, Alpine Stars launching their new colourways. Oh, yeah, Bell they, they, was bit, they was upset that I'm not racing. Yeah, and we've got FXR launching their new colourways. We've got O'Neill launching their new stuff. We've got Pro Circuit on display. we got got um, Troy Lee Designs. Oh, so it's All the big nice brands. to look It's going to be like a dirt bike show. Yeah. It's not just that a few people cool, selling stuff. Yeah, so it's, it's, I'm actually excited. We've got camper van people. We've got whole shop motorhomes displaying big camper van display. We've got Crescent Yamaha there with all the off-road bikes and the World Superbike Champion coming along. Paul Denning yeah. coming? Yeah, Paul Denning's coming with the team and the World Champion. And mate. Top Rack. Yeah. yeah, Top oh, Rack's going. Yeah. He can do stoppies. He'll show you. Yeah, he yeah. can do a stopper, yeah. Guy Martin's asked for tickets, so he's going to be wandering around the place. Wicked. There's going to be a few. There's going to be a lot going on. Tell you on. what, be, get, get your autograph books out, everyone. There's going to be a lot of people there. There's going to be a get lot of names. You've got yours up there still. Yeah, I actually have. <laughs> I started an autograph book. He takes the piss out of me. When, no, when I was good names, when I was it? really young and I first had this track and I used to ride with Jamie Dobb all the time, I had a book and I've got some good people that have Go written. Go list a few. Good for you. James Stewart, 
Tim Ferry. Yeah. Metcalf. Yeah. Everts. Philipparts. Philipparts. Villapoto. Car- Caroli. Yeah. That's and you never took you never took the book anywhere. But there's people. Uh, that yeah, they only here. signed it if they wrote the track, and then oh, they Landry. wrote a little bit about Hayden. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, Roger De Costa signed it, even though he didn't ride. Did he? Excellent. Excellent. He's full. Yeah, you've actually you. got some good names up here. Good for they you. all said it was the a river. shit track, though. And really narrow and really rocky. <laughs> <laughs> it was worse then. <laughs> to be fair, it's got better. Well, it's got rockier, but better. Track looks all right, actually. Credit to you. It looks all right. We're well, actually this looking time last for someone. year, the bike, it was unbelievable, wasn't it? How we had it all rebuilt. It's not been touched since. Oh, We're actually looking right. for a digger driver to come and do it because... It's hard work to get anyway. Everyone's so busy with track builders. Yeah, they're very busy. So if anyone's a skill, skilled... I, I, I had a go one time. Fuck, it's the hardest thing in the world. Horrible yeah, job. If you don't know what you're doing, I can drive that skidster half sensible, but put me in anything else. Just, yeah. if, you, if you don't know what you're doing, you can really fuck up and make a mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can make a mess and I know what I'm doing, but I rush it. <laughs> so, so, yeah. But, um, no, it'd be a good event. I'm, I'm, well, I'm genuinely looking I'm forward I'm nervous because I've never done it before. It's a new thing to me, but luckily Dave King, my partner, has done it before 12 times and he's on it, no problem at all. And the Language Club, those guys, nothing's a drama for them. What Everything is the crazy. the long game of this? Next year as well, obviously. Hopefully try We've got some really, really cool things in the works. I don't want to jeopardise it by saying, but... We're but it's not... This isn't just happening this year. It shouldn't be just a one-off thing, no. I mean, if... Hope to do this again. I mean, I'm not saying it's all about the money, but it's got to pay because I'm into it for a lot. Yeah, you put your balls on the line. Money, you know, so hopefully we get that back and um, we um, and we go again. But it does seem with the pre-sale tickets and with the Grand Prix being so early in the year, like it's going to be one of the biggest races on the British I, I really hope for you it is. Like it's uh, annoying the stigma you get in motocross where people get the arse when a promoter makes some money out of an event. Like, fuck me. Well, if that, they didn't, there wouldn't be an event. Exactly. And it's like if the manufacturer didn't make money, there wouldn't be any bikes. Exactly. If the helmet people didn't make money, you wouldn't have a helmet to wear. If the rider didn't make any money, they'd still turn up. (laughs) (laughs) That's what we do. (laughs) Can't pay this weekend. (laughs) (laughs) No, I don't mean your race in general. (laughs) Half half of them don't fucking just fucking crack on. You're just in it for the long run. Well, you enjoy it, don't you? Yeah, you just love it. But it's, um, yeah, I'm hoping. I'm hoping it works out. I mean, it's all up in the air, but the vibe's positive. Everything's good. The pre-sale's good. The industry... Supports, yeah, the really, industry really definitely really supported good. this race more than any. Well, really, for some really reason, good. they obviously see the but the two stroke thing's massive. You know, you only got to see the the Red Bull straight rhythm, the, the way the Americans are getting behind the two stroke stuff. You spoke to Mitch about your engine, he's fired up, he's yeah, excited. he loved it, he loved it. They all love it because that's what they cut the teeth doing, you know what I mean? We all, yeah, that was they were the heydays, weren't we're not they? jaded with the two stroke stuff, you no, get a bit, a bit jaded with the modern stuff. I miss it. I, well, like I said to you earlier off camera, um. First Supercross I went to, 05. I just caught the tail end of the two-stroke here and then it all went four-stroke, but you, you, that was cool. you miss it, don't you? My first year in the States was 93 when McGrath was on Honda on 15. Yeah. And that was when he came, his breakout year, so that was a cool year to see all that. Definitely. What was he on at, 125? No, his first year on 250 Honda. Uh, did he, he win 125 championship he as well? Yeah, on peak anti-freeze. See, I was three then. That I probably wouldn't have understood <laughs> it. No, <laughs> he, uh, that was a cool time to be there because I was living with Brian Swink and... It was a cool time. No, it's a little it's bit lawless, but it was fun. Oh, I can imagine it yeah. was lawless. You meant you, you, I think you owe us a couple of stories from the last podcast. I'm not well, sure. I don't know, kids. P- kids are watching. All right, in the beer tent, yet yeah, people can get the stories. Oh, yeah, off, we'll yeah. get some beers into us. We'll have a good time of it. Sunday night, we reckon we'll get a bit of liquor down, yeah? Yeah, yeah, no problem at all. Let the loose lips go. Yeah, I'll tell everything. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we mic you up and then just follow you with the camera? Yeah, why not? It'd be funny, <laughs> won't it? You'll be telling Will me delete. There'll have to be a lot of beeping, I think, by the time I've had a no, couple of No, there'll be a lot of deleting on, on Monday morning. Whose bike are you looking after at the weekend? Uh, I don't actually work on anybody's bikes because I've yeah, been I was called every which direction. So we've got Tony Neary, who's my main man. He's looking after Brownie because they're four years in. They get on really well. They're both unflappable, softly spoken. They just get yeah. on. It's great. Uh, we've got Julian Dobb helping with Ryan Villapoto because Julian's going to need to be on the ball with the jet in and everything else. And we've got Wincy helping Tony, and we've got Adam Wells helping Julian. So we've got two guys on each bike. Yeah. So we're more than covered. Um, because it's quick turnaround, isn't it? Like you said, there's only a four-lap practice. Oh, this, you've got to be on it. And, and six-lap races. With these old bikes, there's always problems. Yeah. You know? That's why we build two. We don't build two for any other reason than I guarantee you 
that second bike is going to be behind the marquee, ripped to bits by the second like yeah. the second day. Because that's just, we're stealing bits off it. Like, you wouldn't get your head around. That's just the it's way just it what works. Happens. It's what happens. And if you go down there with no parts. Is that, is that because you don't get a lot of time to ride them before? We can't. We, we can run them, but these guys push them way beyond. Was they the same back then? They were reliable. They were reliable 25 years ago. And they've been, they've been fucking field bikes for 24 years, haven't they? Yeah. <laughs> You know, and like things like Brownie, like Brownie would go out and do a set of reeds in four laps. What's reeds? The reeds and the motor. Fucked. You were just what like, them? I still don't know. Do you even know what reeds are? Reed valves in reed a car. Reed valves, yeah. yeah. Brownie w- won't make a set of those last two races. What? So what? We just replaced And like last year, he was doing front brakes, did three front brakes on us, melted them, melted the seals in the brakes. Really? Yeah, you're just like, he shouldn't come on in. these ones. No, it should be all right. But he came in and he's like, the front wheel would hardly turn. And then you take them apart and the seals are all melted. You're like, fucking really? They're, they're, to be they're fair, pushing it's, on. They're it's pushing good on. that you're on these modern bikes in the main class. I mean, I know there's all sorts of bikes throughout, but the top boys are going to be pushing the they're bikes They're not that modern, yeah, yeah. though. We say modern, but we've kept it. The reason we... Not we, modern, but some of the components the you reason, can use the brakes about. The reason we've it's come out of the gate up. with 2002 to 2022 is 20 years. And when, and when the vintage races started out... It was in like 2009 and the bikes were 89, so it's 20 years. Yeah. So we've kept the 20-year gap. But the bikes have got better, they just have. But I've got to be honest with you, they ain't that much easier to build. Like no. A lot of engineering and a lot of messing about. They haven't been... It's, they're, they're still 20 years old. Yeah, still 20 years old. But the know, comp- like right. that's quite a big step up in brakes and things over that time. Very much so, yeah. You've only got to see that. From that one to the older Honda we built for you. Yeah, well, when there's both side by side, like a it's a fucking big difference. dinosaur, doesn't it? <laughs> and that this thing don't look that much different to your Honda you're riding now, you know? No. Like you, well, like, you got Ali frame. Like your granny couldn't tell the difference, you know what I mean? No. They do look similar. How many times have you had to use that um, special phone book of yours to call in some help or ask a few special questions? All the time. I'm on it every day. I'm ringing people up. What? Just for advice. Old mechanics. Old mechanics. What did you do about this? What did you, how did you get around that? Just sort it out. You know, it's like, yeah. you don't just come up with these ideas yourself. You I mean, know, even just sure, moving the ECU something. must be like That's really semi-technical. You've got to be doing all the wiring loom and, yeah. and you're, you know, you're looking at pictures ain't going to help you, so... You have to just ring the right people up. Is there an ECU them. on 96? Is there, yeah, there's a black box on it. It's nothing. It's not adjustable or nothing. No. And it's adjustable on these To ones. be honest, yeah, but the two strokes didn't really... On 125 used to used to need electrics, 250s, not so much. Yeah. They don't really... No, I didn't know. Did you hear what Wob said earlier off camera about um, the video we did at, at the place last week? Someone screenshot, because there was some writing on the wall and... Zoomed in and asked him what that meant on the on the ball. It's scary because you think, <laughs> "Fuck, he's." They're paying attention. They are paying attention. People do <laughs> screenshot. They do. And I have this conversation with people all the time. They'd be like, "Oh, Iron Hughes never used that front brake," and I'm like, "Just because you've seen a picture from one race doesn't mean that's how it was." Yeah. Because you know as well as I do, the bike that you come out of the gate with your your press photo shoots at the start of the year, it's pretty different to the bike yeah. you finish the year with. Because you're constantly upgrading, yeah. you're constantly changing. Yeah, you're completely right. And the bike's not the same week in, week out, because you're changing stuff up. So you can look at a picture. Well, yeah, as a rider, one would it, you'd use in this clamp, and next week someone says, like, factory KTM now are all on 48 mil. Uh, they've gone from 40, uh, 52 mil to, f- is it 49 or 48? Yeah, 48. So mm-hmm. now they're like, they've gone from the big forks, and now apparently the, the other forks, they've gone from standard shock to this shock. Yeah. Uh, Justin Cooper w- at the beginning of the year went from factory suspension back to standard suspension so everything changes literally on them bikes we've just sent out a load of bolts and the the, the amount of stuff we're having to send for them to bolt different shit on the bike yeah because they've changed so they're much they're moving year. stuff all the time so it is what it is it suits us it's not a problem everyone's searching for the lap time yeah, well, that's are. the thing it's a lot of, there's a lot of development it was the same back in the Grand Prix back in the day or in the States you know the stuff's changing all the time you can't look at a picture and categorically say that's right or that's wrong. You better speak to the mechanic. Yeah. And he'll tell you, oh, that didn't work or this did work. Now, just from knocking about with Billy, his bike changes. Oh, my God. Like weekly almost. Yeah, yeah nothing like it. Yeah. It's, sometimes it's totally different. And you go, all right, that looks. Well, they're constantly developing. That's the thing. And that's if you're not developing, then you're standing still, aren't you? Mm, 100%. At that level, at top level, in British Championship, my bike's not changed really. Well, you say that. You've been fanning about your suspension yeah, and suspension, linkages. But not and like um, 
the so the fact it's hard to get stuff for the modern stuff because you're um I just think because everything's so new all the time, the companies half the time you can't get something until six months after a year after the bikes can have no, been I released. Look, and I mean I know it sound like Ralph Venables back in my day, but the bikes are really good standard now. Yeah, they are, They're yeah. Really you don't good. need to, st- like you don't you need to change t- stuff. You can put a set of a pipe on a set of suspension on a bike, go racing Grand Prix. Fuck, you couldn't do that 20 years ago. No. You have to be right. Yeah, you don't need to. Um, have to do a lot of work to make them race ready. But the factory team, they're not buying parts, they're building their own parts. That's, That's the difference. The thing, yeah. And then we can't, a normal person can't get them parts, so you you don't change much. But they're literally trying stuff, I guess, for the future bikes. So they're one thing. Oh, yeah, you have factory bikes bike. two or three years ahead of production. Yeah. And it doesn't all make production, it doesn't, doesn't all work. No, I listened to an interview. The other day in the factory Honda are using a different frame to what I'm using, but it's probably a frame that they're going to, I think I heard they're going to change the frame a little bit on the next bike. So they're probably that frame already that oh, we're so going to get in a year. It's or so something. different. Yeah. And it's just because it works for one guy doesn't mean it works for another. Yeah, exactly. And that's where it always makes me laugh with some suspension people. They'll be like, they'll bounce on the forks or shock. And that's wrong. Like, well, hold on a minute. You walk up to, Pro Circuit Kawasaki, you bounce on one bike, it'll feel different to the next one. So which one's wrong? They're both yeah. right for the guy riding the bike. So you can't just categorically say, that's right, that's no, wrong. I run mine real fast. Everyone always goes, that's fast. And I was yeah, like, but if that's what you like. If I slow it down, I don't like it. No, well, there you go. So it's not wrong. It's right for you. Mm. That's all that matters. And that's yeah, why if you go fast on it, it works. That's why there's adjustment on a fucking yeah. stuff. You know what I mean? It always right. amazed me how little adjustment there was on road race stuff. Well, yeah, but then... But they change the valve in rather than sh- the clickers, you know what yeah. I mean? We've got massive adjustment on clickers. I like it when you see them do a, a wet session, they just fucking pop the tops of the springs off. Boom, yeah, I was talking yeah. to um, Ben, who used to work at Dixon. Yeah, he's Odin's guy. Um, he's Odin's guy now, and then they don't adjust nothing. I said, so so if it rains, what you do? And he was like, just change the spring. So And he was like, yeah, it's literally pop off, bosh. Yeah, the springs come out, new ones. Boom, boom, yeah, no, and then it's change. on. It's not yeah, like... It is. And I was surprised how like Valentino's Ross's forks were not that expensive. You'd expect no. them to be like 200 grand or something. And they were like five grand or something. They weren't... Really? Yeah, they weren't insane money. Well, Ben was doing Valentino Rossi's stuff last year. Yeah, crazy, isn't it? Because he was on... He's on that the team that um, Rossi was on last year. Now he's obviously... Um, uh, well, whoever's there now, but... Come on, I mean, he stuff, went last week. Davizioso. No. <laughs> yeah. Who's on the bike? Davizioso um, and uh, no, you've got it. You're getting it wrong. I'm right here. Rossi was on factory last year. Rossi was on Patronus. Yeah. Now Patronus has changed, but it's Davizioso and um, mate, he's the South African kid. All right, I'm with you. We actually supplied uh, Valentino's team with tools. Really? <laughs> yeah. I've seen them. VR46 t- 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 Oh bars. yeah. Bars. Still waiting for mine, but you know, yeah. Christmas soon. Christmas story. <laughs> <laughs> on your Christmas list. Yeah, we make a lot of stuff for those and the Alpine Formula One guys and yeah. I don't know how it ever got here really, it's weird. Yeah. It's, it's interesting stick. what happens, isn't it? How it all goes through. It is. And it's all it's very much an old yeah, boy. Yeah, mad how it's, even it's an old boys network as well. Let's not kid yourself, it is who you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, even where you was you was a mechanic, then you was doing goggles and working for Smith and now it's gone like full circle and it's yeah. like being in the right place at the right time and then all of a sudden boss you're now you're doing this. Yeah. Now you're promoting it and doing an event. I know. I've Who'd done everything. You're an event, I was a magazine be an event editor. Guy. I've done everything, kid. I am the jack of all trades. Yeah, someone says you're going to be event. organising motocross events, running big events. Do you like doing like motocross events? Have you had any backlash? Anyone called you a twat? Yes. <laughs> you can't please everybody, can you? You can no, just do what That's you a hard job. That is very hard. You can just hard. do what you think's best for the event or best for everybody there. And somebody's going to have the ump. It's like, you know, like, Dave, when we first had our meeting, said no Saturday tickets. And I'm like, really, why? And he's like, because you can't stop them staying all weekend. You're like, okay, fair enough. So every day, do you do Saturday only? Do you do Saturday only? I'm like, no. But I oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not like you can kick everybody out of the whole venue and check them again coming in. Yeah. You can't. Is that how most events work? They must do the GP tickets. Oh, I don't know. It's all new to me. But I can only go with the guys who have done it before. You know, I can have an opinion about most stuff, but yeah, someone else. Well, I've never been. promoted a race before. I've yeah, been to, I've been to a few. I've never promoted one, so I have to go with what those guys say. I think we're going to change that for next year anyway. Yeah, well, it's it's, it's learning a, process. Oh my god, yeah, we've got it wrong on a few things, but generally, so far, so good. You know, I'm absolutely shitting myself. Yeah, because 
<laughs> it, everything seems like it's you know if we remember this or remember that and when i speak to dave or chris or ronnie or cookie at the track everything's handled they're like yeah we got it don't worry about it we got it I'm yeah, so it's glad somebody asked because I I feel like that proper imposter syndrome where somebody's going to figure in a minute. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, but it's that last week in it now more than ever. Literally, you, you're in the last week. It's like a yeah. high pressure situation. Really, it seems to be like the phone does not stop. No, ringing. it's not stopped today. The phone doesn't stop ringing, and it's like you try. You want to look after everybody, but you know, at the end of the day, me and Dave are just promoters. It's the club who sort the tickets out, and there's only so many. There's only so many photographers you can have on the track. And it's yeah. You got me down there. on the list. Of course. That's all right. Then. And me. I'm going to be a media Tom. <laughs> we get you running around in a bib. Yeah, I have a bib and a ca- my camera. <laughs> I'll have my new lens by then. No. I just hope it's going to be all right. I think it's going to be good. There's a lot of interest. and It just seems crazy to come out of the gate and what's potentially the biggest race on the UK calendar. Yeah, you've gone big straight away, yeah. You know, but I haven't built up to this. This is big. Well, you, you've set yourself up for it, bringing Ryan Villapoto and Mike Brown, two yeah. pretty big names <laughs> in motocross like yeah. there. That, that'll do it for you. Yeah, well, we, yeah, we're talking helps. to a couple of bigger ones for next year. Who are going to Villapoto? Yeah. His name's Ricky. There's not many much bigger than Villapoto. No, RV's. Probably two. RV's as big as it gets. It'd be cool, though. He's excited. Ryan's really excited. He's coming in Wednesday. He's going to help us put the tent up. I'll, yeah, I'll be excited okay. to see how he goes. It's but he's a nice kid, Ryan. You know what I mean? Like I dealt with him when he was on. Yeah, when he came to the GPs, he was pretty sound. Yeah, he, he was, was nice Smith kid. on eighty fives. He was Smith on eighty fives. I, I remember him. watching the videos. Yeah, he was, and I used to go for you know Armageddon. Or something. Chromageddon was it? Did you have that? Chromageddon. One? Oh, Chromageddon. Me and Denny used to hang out with his mum and dad, and it was great, lovely family. You know, Ryan's a super nice kid, but he, he never. He's so different now to what he was when he was racing. Cause yeah. he, it's like he didn't like it. He didn't enjoy it. Didn't enjoy the pressure. I think at the and p- I when he's in that I, position, I he is. when he was done, he was going to be done. But he's he's hung around and he's a different person. He's much more... He's back to the person who I kind of knew on an Yeah, as a kid. Yeah, he was. Even in the videos as a kid, he was so playful. Just he was young it. then, yeah. loving life. And then, but you know but when I he's think, on them carry 450s, he was so serious. Yeah, but I think bloody yeah, but yeah, when, you're getting, you're getting when you're getting them, paid and you've got that pressure fuck every me. year, it'd yeah. be that's a hard thing to do. Isn't Especially it? in America, as soon as motocross is over, he's won. What's he get two weeks and then back he's back on it? And it's like you can't even enjoy what you've done. So no. it's, you I can remember never when enjoy he came anything. over to the Belgian Grand Prix um, when he was asked me about speaking to some European teams about coming over because he fancied doing a year in the, in the GPs. And he was talking so matter-of-factly about racing Ryan Dungey and James Stewart. The way he was talking was just like, if I've got if if I'm in the lead and I've got Ryan behind me, Dungey, he's like, I've got to get a lead because I'm going to get tired and he isn't. Mm. I've got to get myself a ten or fifteen second gap because I know he's going to keep coming. And he said, James, James is faster than both of us, but if you put if you show him a front wheel, he panics and you'll make a mistake. Yeah, and he said. I can't keep this speed up for long. <laughs> if I shove him in front wheel a couple of times, he's going to fuck yeah, up. That's mad. And it's just mad that he knew them yeah. so well. And he knew that he wasn't as fast as James, but he was faster than Ryan. Yeah. Ryan was fitter than both of them. And it's it like when just, you're just racing all week, like every weekend back yeah, to back to back. It was funny to just to listen to him. Yeah, that is quite cool. Breaking stuff down. It was quite. What's quite your, what, bit, bit off topic, but what's your thoughts on the Ryan Dungey comeback? <sighs> I think good, it's pretty cool to good see. Good for him if he wants to come back, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's cool to cool. see. I think it's mint. And like Carioli as yeah, he's well. He's only that's obviously done it for it. himself. It's not like a money thing. He's just generally money, personal. No, he come to have a go, you know? I just think it's mint how he just turned up number five Red Bull helmet, Fox gear like he'd never left. Oh, yeah, it's exactly. just it mint. Literally like he'd never left. What about Carioli? Yeah, cool again, isn't it? Like, fuck me, you've done all that. You've got nothing to prove, but you want to yeah. have a go. No, exactly. Well, that's what I like about Ryan coming here. He's got nothing to prove. Yeah. He's got no reason to come and do it. He's. Flying halfway around the world. You need people like that. And I think with him... Because he's racing because he enjoys riding dirt bikes. Like Brownie, he comes and he just tears it up. Brownie's like Peter Pan. He's a fucking anomaly. <laughs> he's not normal. You know, he just done Loretta's one plus 40, plus 50. And I think his lap times would have put him up with like Deegan. Really? Oh, fuck. Yeah, check the lap times. <laughs> oh, I will have I mean, a look at that insane. actually. That's fucking mad. It's madness. I don't know if he can keep it up, but... I mean, the the guy is like a different league. And well, then he did. What did he do? Four years off road riding. Then he just yeah. decided, oh, but just do enduros and then ride a dirt bike. That kid. And he just. Like How old he, is he now? Fifty. Mm, but you watch him and like in practice, like he starts overshooting corners. Like he says to me, when I got in practice, don't panic. 
<laughs> Strange thing to say, isn't it? <laughs> what do you mean, don't fucking panic? And he waits till the very last guy's on the track and then pulls on the track and he pulls over and he's looking down at the bike and I'm like, what the fuck's he doing? And I realise he's not waving his arms around or looking for me or tone. So I'm like, maybe this is what he means by don't panic. So he waits then for the first guy who went on the track to come up behind him. So he sets off then, stand feet on the pegs, does a lap. Second lap, they don't time it till the third lap. Second lap, he starts overshooting corners. Terrible. Like he's got no brakes. So I'm like, <laughs> fuck have we done wrong here now? Like, has he got, can't he stop? Third lap, comes past us. And there's a 90 degree turn. Fourth gear, didn't even back off. Just <laughs> leaned it over. If that berm had let go, it landed in the van. <laughs> Speed, he came past us. Then you go and look at the lap times. He's three seconds quicker than anybody else on the track. Yeah, on a bike, he's mental. only ridden for two laps. <laughs> on a track that he's only just seen, you were just like, and they, we said after, what's wrong with the brakes? Nothing, why? I'm like, were you overshooting corners right, left and centre? He said, if you don't overshoot, you don't know where your braking points are. <laughs> yeah, that is mad. Fucking hell. It's all on purpose. Well, even I remember racing. When you say he's 50, I race. He beat me by one point in the British Championship in 2007. Do you remember that? Yeah. Uh, the thing um, is, Brown, you, yeah. take a, you can take crying, a picture of him yeah. and use it for a training school because he's perfect on the bike, isn't he? Yeah. He don't look like an old man riding the bike, does he? He doesn't look like an old man when he's ripped and oh fit. God, and he's fit. I mean, speak to Dean. Yeah, about Dean him. says how mad he, how fit he is. In the gym, he cycles with them, trains with them. He's at the track, running around the track. If the, he says he just, if you need something from the workshop that's like a five minute, like, run away. Dean's like, I'll just ride back. He's like, no, I'll go get it. And then he just starts sprinting back to the thing and back. <laughs> like, any chance that he exactly. can do a bit of training, he does it. Yeah, but again, yeah. that's cool. You need people like that around yeah, you and, and so, in the he's, sport. He's so easy. And he's ang- he, like, he'll sit and have lunch with the kids and just, he's a family man and he's a lovely geezer. I know he's got anger issues. He makes me laugh. <laughs> I've been in situations that he's terrified me. Really? But, oh, I've been in a car where he's reached for a gun in the glove box and all kinds. What, he goes nuts. Oh, he's, uh, yeah. They all love, I mean, everyone the loves him. I've never heard a bad word say about somebody. him. I'd be like, oh, is he? Yeah. It wouldn't be a big fucking never. You'd <laughs> no. be like, the guy's got, <laughs> he's got anger issues. But, but Dean, but. All right, Dean's obviously with him every day because he's there and he's, Brownie's like, you have Alden and then you have Mike that oversees like the other guys yeah. and Dean's with the other guys and he's with him every day and he just loves the bloke, like, can't oh, say a bad word about him. No, he's never. I've never ex. heard anyone say a bad word about him. No, he's good as gone. He'll look after you, and he's he's really appreciative of what we do with him. He says he can't believe the bikes. He's just unreal, you know. He, and he knows we do the best we can. Mm. And if it don't go right, we don't go right. But we've done the best we can. And he knows that, and that's all he can ask. You know? And Is I he, know, I know full well we can leave there Sunday night, and you can't be like, fucking Brownie didn't try very hard. Yeah. Fuck that. He's going to be doing the best he can. The only trouble is with him, I will say, if the bike is having a problem, he ain't backing her down. He's just going to blow he's it gonna, smith the rings. He, he'll twist it until it fucking breaks. <laughs> and that's and he'll tell you that. Mm. What about his disappearing acts that he does? He's like Mr. Ben, isn't he? <laughs> he comes in our tent, he takes his helmet off, and he'll stand there and tell Tone if there's any changes to make. Then he walks through the door at the back of the tent, and I do not know where he goes. <laughs> And the next time you see him, is he'll appear in that doorway five Hell minutes yeah. before the next race, all brand new, clean gear. You're like, where the fuck have you been? People say, he's brown here. I'm like, if you don't see him, no. Because <laughs> he's not. I don't know where he goes. I don't know what he does. I Maybe he goes to the beer tent. I don't know what he does. Bless him. Maybe we should track him up one day. Yeah, no, I'll track him. <laughs> we'll just follow him. You just yeah, you follow him with your camera all weekend. <laughs> he's, he's a funny boy. Bless him. That's one uh, another question I got for you, Bob, because I don't fancy eating Tommy's cooking for th- for three nights in the motor home. What What's the food situation? We've got loads of food vendors there. Um, basically, it's nice out of our control dinner. a little bit. We, they, 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 the same people who do the beer, do the food. They t- ask us how many people are coming, and they supply enough stuff to warrant. Ah, so we got. But all the days of the days of just having burgers and chips are gone. You know, there's noodle people and all that. I assume. I mean, we don't by just letting them take care of it. We don't really get involved, but. My missus is doing hospitality all weekend. Oh, good. So, oh, nice. Yeah, so we'll be doing plenty of that. And there's an Indian down the road. And we're only six miles from Swindon if you want to go and get something mm. to eat. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I think a load of my um, my mates are coming in there, staying in Swindon and that. So. Yeah, it's, I mean. Yeah, and they don't ever come to race, do they? No, it's all my dad's old mates. They've just, they've, the last race sure. they came to was probably a, a GP you raced in your heyday. Yeah, yeah. yeah back in the day. But there's uh, so many people are coming who, who haven't been to races since Fox Hill or 20 years ago. So yeah. many people coming, so I just hope it's going to be a good vibe. I yeah. just hope it's going to be a, a fun time. I hope it's not too busy where it's uncomfortable. Well, no, 
I reckon but it's a big venue. You know, let's make out. It's not. It's not. A, it's not a little. I don't think it can be too busy. I think like the atmosphere more busy in place like that. That's just better. Yeah. Well, we've got some places you go. You want it busy to get it stacked around the edge. I want that place lit up. I want. I want coming on that first turn and not even near the bikes. You mm. know what I mean? It's going to yeah, be. I hope. I hope. I hope so because we've put a lot of effort into this. You know, it's going to be good. Yeah. So it's come and support it. Yeah. So well, I think I think we'll call it a day there, so we can all get on our way. But yeah, please come and support it. If you if you're into motocross, Wob's put his balls on the line here. Let's um let's get behind him. I would have put my balls on the line if I was I on the just line. It's me. It's me. Well, Dave King, Languish Club. We've a all, few people. Oh yes, there's good. been a lot of investment in in, in doing money. it. Time and money in the bikes, getting the right people over. You've got time. It's Monday. This is coming out on Monday, so it starts on Thursday. You've got time to get there, enjoy the, the weekend. On come. the gate, no problem. Just come along. Yeah, camping is fifty pound for the weekend, twelve pound fifty a night over the bank holiday weekend. I mean, where the fuck are you going to get camping for that? You know, and we do a lot of festivals, and trust me, forty quid for the weekend is cheap. Yeah, because we go to a normal little family festival at home. It's three hundred pound for a ticket. It's mad, isn't it? That they can charge, and you know, so with the live music and the entertainment and the bands, yeah, and the beers, the bikes, quid the for riders. the weekend is not expensive. No, no. so that's uh, that's this weekend coming, starting on Thursday. The I'm going to check 25th, this date. Fifth, is it? Thursday the twenty fifth, twelve pm. Gates that, open. Yeah. So make sure you come. Make sure you support it. Tommy's going. I'll be there. We're going to still make a video about and do can. a bit, yeah, even though Tommy's at home. And we'll see if we can find Brownie. He can sign something for you. Yeah. That's it. We will see you at Fox Hills. So thanks see very soon. much. Get behind it and catch you all soon. Oh, we'll do another podcast sooner rather than later. Billy's back next week. He also might be on that race on Saturday. That is a might. And Billy's mites normally don't mean that he'll be there. But it's a slim chance that Billy will be there as well. But we'll do another podcast after. So we'll talk about the race. Wob won't be here. Tommy, me, Tommy and Billy. So thanks very much. Catch you all soon. See you later.